So if you, if you think for a moment about this problem of like, so we have these five algorithms, or like these five types of learning, right? How can we unify them all into one? At first, this seems like a very hard problem. And in fact, some people have claimed that it's an impossible problem to solve. It seems very hard because the algorithms all look very different. But if you look at them closely, actually, they're not that different. They all have the same three parts, representation, evaluation, and optimization. So let's look at what those parts are and then how we can do the unification. So representation is how the learner represents what it's learning, the model or the program that it's learning, right? It's in some sense the programming language in which the learner is going to write the algorithm that it discovered. Typically, it's not going to be Java or C++ or anything like that. It's going to be something like first order logic, right? But, you know, it could be differential equations. It could be a linear regression. It could, it could be all sorts of things, right? So the first thing that we need to do is to unify the representations. And a natural thing to do here is to start with the, you know, with the representations of, that the, that the um, symbolists use, which are variations on, on first order logic, and the representation that the Bayesians use, which are, you know, generally known as graphical models. Bayesian networks are one type of graphical model, another type is Markov networks, and so on. Each of these is already extremely general. If you can combine the two, you can pretty much represent anything you might want to represent. Right? Any computer program can, for example, already be represented in first order logic. You know, any way to deal with uncertainty and weighing evidence can be represented in graphical models. You know, there's all these sort of like bazillions of different models that people have in statistics that are all fit into that framework. So if we can combine the two, uh, we have a very good, you know, representation to start with. And indeed, we have done that. Uh, in essence, what we've developed is, is uh, various forms of probabilistic logic. So this is a logic that also incorporates probability and uncertainty. And the most widely used is called uh, Markov logic networks. It's essentially a combination of logic and Markov networks. And it's, and, and it's very simple. It just starts with formulas in first order logic. Think of a rule in logic, like, you know, if this, then that, for example. And then what it does is it gives each, each rule a weight. Okay? So if you really believe the rule, you give it a high weight. If you're not sure, you give it a lower weight. And then, and then the weights of the, and then the probability of, of, of a state of the world goes up with the number and the weight of the rules that are true in that world. Okay? So with this, we can represent pretty much anything that we'd like. Now, the next part of every learning algorithm is the evaluation. The evaluation is the scoring function that tells me how good a candidate model is. Right? How well does it fit the data? You know, how well does it fit my purposes? Okay? In, in essence, what, what, what the learning problem is, is to find within the space defined by a representation, find the program that maximizes my evaluation function. So what should that evaluation function be? Well, one obvious you know, candidate is just the posterior probability that Bayesians use, and that again has a lot of other things already as special cases. But more generally, uh, the evaluation shouldn't really be part of the algorithm. It should be provided by the user. It's for the user to decide what the learner should be optimizing. So, no, so if you're a company and, and your purpose is to maximize profits, then that's what the evaluation function should be. If you're a consumer and your purpose is to maximize your happiness, then that's what should be being maximized, is some measure of your happiness. Okay? So what the, what, the, what the mass problem should be able to do is take anybody's you know, objective function and, and then learn to optimize that. Okay? Finally, right, I just said the word optimize. The third part of this is optimization, is how do we actually find the model that maximizes that function? Okay? And here there's a natural combination of ideas from genetic programming and backpropagation. Namely, to discover formulas, we can use genetic programming, right? Each formula in first order logic is a tree, right? And now I can cross these trees over and, and, and apply the genetic process to come up with better formulas that better describe my domain. And then once I have those formulas, of course, you know, if I'm, doing, if I'm using Markov logic, I need to come up with weights for those formulas. But of course, this is where backprop comes in, right? I have my big chain of reasoning, right, involving many different formulas and facts and different steps, and all of those have weights. And in order to, you know, learn those weights, I can naturally use backpropagation. Okay. So, you know, we're pretty far along in this. Uh, we haven't succeeded yet, uh, but uh, you know, some people think it's only a matter of time before we do.